If your application has to support a very large number of HTTP connections at the same time, chances are that you're using Netty. Many non-blocking web frameworks use Netty under the hood like Vertex, Micronaut or Kater. To show you how JProfiler helps you solve problems with Netty-based architectures, I've prepared a small example with Spring Webflux that also uses Netty by default. The entire source code of the application is contained in this single Kotlin file. At the top, there is the Spring Boot application class. Below that, you can see the main method to start the application. And at the bottom, there is a REST controller mapped to the root path that expects a numeric parameter named delay. In Webflux, you use reactive streams to make the execution non-blocking, here with a stream of a single element implemented by the Mono class. In our example, the server waits for a specified number of milliseconds before returning a string. The delay element method is part of the reactive stream framework and does not block a thread like calling thread sleep would do. Let's profile this application with JProfiler. At first we'll be interested in the call tree view. Let's warm up the server by making a request. I've prepared a recording profile that starts both CPU recording and HTTP server probe recording. With recording profiles, you can simultaneously switch on recordings without having to go to the various views. CPU recording provides data for the call tree view, and the HTTP server probe has its own view. It handles both server containers as well as Netty-based servers. We start recording by selecting the recording profile from the drop-down menu. Now we can make a couple of requests. Let's have a look at the call tree. There is an HTTP splitting node that shows the root URL. By default, you will get different nodes for different URL paths. In this case, we would really like to use the delay request parameter for splitting the call tree in order to see the different durations separately. This can be configured in the profiling settings of the HTTP server probe. As you can see, URL splitting is enabled by default and only the URI path is used for splitting. Any other kind of splitting is configured with scripts. There are two kinds of scripts, one for servlet containers, where you can use the servlet API, and one for generic scripts, where you use an API provided by JProfiler that abstracts over the various Netty APIs for handling HTTP requests. To add such a splitting script, we click on the Add button. We could start with an empty script or with a template for a common splitting scenario. Split by request path and parameter is what we would like to do so we select that one. Splitting scripts get an HTTP request object as a parameter and have to return a string. The return value will be used for splitting and is displayed in the call tree. There is also a script context parameter that can be used for remembering data across multiple invocations. The script template assumes that you have a parameter named action. In our case, the parameter name is delay, so we replace it accordingly. Let's look at the details of the script. The first line extracts the request parameter named delay from the query string. It uses the HTTP util class that is available in splitting scripts. It has methods for extracting path segments and request parameters. Then we assign the request URI path to a variable. The HTTP request class has methods that are named similarly to the HTTP servlet request class from the servlet API. Finally, if the delay parameter is set, we append it to the request path. Otherwise, we just return the request path. Clicking on OK will save the script to the script list. There are multiple scripts because JProfiler can split HTTP calls into multiple levels in the call tree. For example, you could first split by the HTTP method and then by the request path. Multiple levels can give you more insight into the performance characteristics of your HTTP calls depending on what you're interested in.
When we click on OK, the scripts are compiled and JProfiler will ask us whether to apply the new profiling settings right away. When we click Apply Now, the previously recorded call tree data is cleared and recording is started again with the new settings. Now we make some requests from the browser again. Let's see what the call tree looks like now. The three requests are now shown separately and they all take a millisecond or so because the delay never occurs on any thread due to the non-blocking nature of the reactive stream. However, JProfiler knows when the request is completed and displays that information in the HTTP server probe view. This uses the same splitting configuration as for the call tree and hotspots are identified on that basis. The probe also has an events view to track individual requests, optionally with a full URI, and a tracker view to show a time resolved graph for selected hotspots. Finally, there is a telemetry view that shows graphs for request counts and average request durations. Using a profiler that is aware of HTTP calls and can split the call tree can make a huge difference when trying to solve performance problems. As you have seen, JProfiler not only supports the traditional server containers, but also has extensive support for Netty to cover many modern web frameworks.